the past few months, I have been using DxO Photo Lab instead of Adobe Lightroom in order to edit my photos, mostly because Lightroom is just running atrociously on my computer at the moment. It is using 48 gig of RAM to boot, and it never gets better after that. Now, I've never liked Lightroom. I use it because it's kind of the standard. Lots of plugins only support it, for example. But I never liked it from the start, going back 18 years or something when I first was editing digital photos. I loved Apple's Aperture and was very sad to see that go. And Lightroom always had the wrong workflow for me. So now I'm struggling with it again. I'm very happy to go off and try something else and try and learn something else because once you've got a tool that sort of just about works for you, you kind of just use it even if it's not really the best anymore. And it takes time to swap. It takes time to learn something else. And one advantage that Lightroom has is that it has a lot of built-in presets and that auto button that just sort of makes things kind of look good by default. And that's always a bit lacking in other software. And Photolab doesn't have a huge amount of presets. And although they work for most sort of normal types of photography, I never felt like the built-in presets worked for my bird photography. So I took the time to make one. It's available for free down below. If you use Photolab, give it a go and let me know how you get on. Don't use it on people, they'll look absolutely horrendous. It is for birds. And if you have any feedback, let me know because I'd like to make more of these in the future if they're useful to people. And uh, I'll put the time into doing that. I've been working on one for my landscapes, for example, as well. And I'll cover that in a future video. But it doesn't always work perfectly. Obviously, every photo is different. And so I've got a couple of examples that uh, I'm going to take a quick look at in a moment because there has been an update to Photolab this week, which is 7.6, and it allows you to fix some of the problems that my preset causes. So it works really well on the first photo, but on the second photo, it goes too far, it's too saturated, because high saturation in bird photos is quite common. But on certain subjects, it can certainly cause you some issues. And the latest version of Photolab finally lets you use the very intuitive, curiously, color wheel for local adjustments. So you can mask an area off and you can very heavily manipulate the color in that area. And that is very interesting. So let's go and take a look. So to start with, I'm just going to show a quick example of how you use the HSL tool, uh, which is the very fancy color wheel, as you can see here to manipulate some of the colors in a photo. I'm going to start with this landscape photo that I've already edited. So after bringing up the saturation of this, this is a common problem I have here in Wales. The greens are very green. They're very, very heavily saturated. This seems to be a trait of the Nikon colors that are in the raw file. I don't really have this problem as much with other cameras to the same degree, but when you bump up the saturation of the photo, the greens are very, very strong. Great for wildlife photos, kind of frustrating for landscapes. It starts to look quite bizarre. And so in this photo, I have manipulated the green area here. And when I turn this on, you can see that it just cuts that sort of uh, excessively vibrant green and just brings it back in line with some of the rest. It also kills off a few of the sort of uh, overbright highlights on some of the bushes. It is generally just a little bit tidier. And so you can see how the color wheel sort of works here. There's the sort of uh, selection of your color range on the inner wheel. You can then shift that range around by moving the outer wheel. So you can move it to be more greeny blue, or you can move it to what would be more greeny yellow. You can really, really mess with the colors in the photos. It's quite impressive. Uh, but then once you've got your selection and you've got your shift where you want it, you can then manipulate saturation, luminance, and uniformity is quite an interesting one. It either gives you more color tones, but then that can also manipulate the colors to be very different, or you can bring them closer together. You can make them much more green. Uh, in this instance, I'm just killing the saturation and the luminance off. And you can see it's just 
brought it a little bit down. So quite a simple example, but now let's take a look at the bird photo preset that I've got. So this is the raw photo. This is a red kite, again, up in the Brecon region where the previous photo was taken uh, and ignoring the black dot of a crow in the background, which I would obviously edit out. Uh, we're going to apply my birds preset to this photo. And you can see by default, if you apply sort of uh, one of the DXO ones, it'll come out looking just a little bit brighter. These presets work really well for most photos, but for birds, I much prefer something a bit punchier. So instead, we're going to apply the one that I've been working on. And it is much more vibrant. This is obviously to taste. If it doesn't work for you, then that is fine. Uh, everyone likes different things at the end of the, end of the day, and this works for me. So in this photo, I am pleased with that change. It's not excessively vibrant in any particular area. These colors look pretty good to me and I'm quite happy with that. Uh, one thing to notice or one thing to note in Photolab is that the uh, noise reduction is not previewed in the manipulation because it's too expensive, I'm guessing. And uh, you have to export the photo to see that. So I'm just going to export it and we can see how the finished picture looks. So my preset does include the noise reduction by default. And obviously you can manipulate this preset to uh, be better for your use case and remove things like that if you so desire. But here is the, uh, the finished JPEG. And I am very happy with the result of that. It looks very clear colors are nice and look quite realistic to me. It sort of compensates for it having been quite a dull day and brings out a lot of the color. But if we now look at the problems that this preset can cause, we can see how to fix it as well. So this is a shell duck. This was taken at uh, Slimbridge and we apply the same preset. Now it's done something quite horrendous to the shell duck's beak here. <laughs> it's blown out the color quite badly. This should be red really more than uh, a lurid pink, I guess this is. This is just generally quite strange. Now this isn't the full photo lab, I guess it's the color of the day and maybe a bit of extra red sensitivity in the sensor, which they are often prone to. And so you can manipulate the color channels here. You can go into the red channel and we can affect stuff here, but it is also going to affect some of the feathers in other areas and you're going to start losing some colors. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to paint on some local adjustments. And this is going to be an interesting challenge because I'm currently using a trackball. So uh, bear with me. Right, I think that'll do for a demonstration at least. And as you can see, we can now actually use the HSL tool inside this local adjustment. And this is very, very interesting to me because we can actually manipulate it to get the better color range. So we've got a lot more pink in this than I would like. So I'm going to expand this to cover more of the pinks as well. Maybe even a little bit further, maybe go around into the purples. You can also move this obviously to change a little bit of the range that it's manipulating. And then we can see how it looks if we sort of shift it. So I think it should be a little bit redder to start with. So we're going to go a little bit more towards red. And then I'm going to pull the saturation back quite heavily to somewhere like there, I think, somewhere around sort of 25. And then we can look at the luminance aspect too as well. So now that I've pulled the saturation back, it's gone a little bit too dark perhaps. So let's pull it up a little bit to see how it looks. 
and how do we preview this turn it on or off from up here so as you can see it's just manipulated it back to looking a little bit more natural because that is very pink and overblown particularly here you can see that it's just gone really really weird but when we turn it back on we're getting a much better image out of it so i'm quite pleased with that and let's export that to disk again So yes, I'm very pleased with the results that I've gotten from that. And this new tool came at a very convenient time for me because I was already working on these photos. And it's always nice when you have a use for a new tool almost immediately, rather than having to forget about it and then learn it at a later date when you eventually remember that it exists. That's always quite nice. But I haven't used everything in the new 7.6 update. So if you are a Photolab user, and you have tried them out, let me know how you get on and if I'm missing any tricks from the new update. I know there's something around DCP and improved color matching between Lightroom and uh, Photolab. Very interesting, but I've not really explored it yet. Equally, give the preset a go if you'd like. You, you, I mean, you don't have to. And let me know your feedback and other ways in which I could improve it or make it more generally applicable, I suppose. Uh, or any variants that could work based off of it, because that tends to be the easiest way to do these things. But if you aren't a Photolab user, I think there's a free trial available. It's worth giving it a go. It's always worth exploring other tools to see if something suits your needs better. And aside from the nice color management tools, it also doesn't consume 48 gig of RAM when idling on my computer. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.